Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. It is August 25th, 2023, and we are going to dye yarn for the first time this year. Now, I, I mentioned in the video with the, the unboxing of what we got at the, the fountain pen show that it has been a bad year. One of the things that we had to deal with was running a sewer line to our house. Um, we've been on septic for as long as we've owned this house and late last year we started having problems with our septic system. We had somebody come out, come out, look at it, pump it, look at it again. They suspected that we had a clog somewhere in our line to our drain field, so we wanted them to do something about that. First the county was going to have to come out and inspect. We waited months and months and months and months and months for the county to come out. They never did and we finally said fine. I am tired of having to arrange my life and everything we do around using as little wastewater as possible, which is a good thing, but you know, when you only get to shower twice a week so that you don't have to have somebody come out every week and pump your septic tank at a cost of like 300 bucks a shot, that wears on you after a while. So we had to have the we had to have a sewer line run um, and decommission our septic tank. So that was $15,000 that we were not expecting to have to spend this year, but it's okay. It's okay. It was also involved um, the internet line getting cut during that because 811 didn't bother to mark it when they marked everything else. And then shortly thereafter, a water line break right next to our house. <laughs> it's been a year. And that's not even the bad stuff that happened. It's been a year. But that's actually been fixed for a while. Um, a few months out, mm -hmm. April? May. May. Oh, that's right. Mm. Oh, God. Um, we got that taken care of in May. Um, but then Something really, really bad happened. We'll talk about that later. Um, so we have not done any yarn dyeing at all this year until now. It is supposed to be 95 degrees outside today. So I thought this would be a really good day to solar dye some yarn. And we're not actually solar dyeing yarn though. We are going to solar dye some silk roving. Now, I have never dyed silk roving. I've never dyed pure silk yarn. Um, I do have a project plan for that. Um, like everything, I put it on the back burner for a while. Um, but I've got some Tussa silk here that I actually picked this up at Reconsidered Goods in Greensboro, North Carolina. They are a reuse upcycling craft store i really would say um if you've got crafting supplies or things that could potentially be used for art craft making whatever um you can donate to them and they put them for sale at amazing prices and you can go there and you can buy stuff to use for making art making crafts they've got some stuff there it's just decor too um this little bag of tessa silk was a dollar one dollar for this so yes that is a really really good price um somebody apparently was clearing out their spinning stash and decided to donate it there there's a whole bunch i got a huge bag of rubbing from them so yeah tons of stuff to buy and spin so we are going to solar dye this today and we're going to be using dharma trading's peacock blue and sour apple. Okay. Is that a fluorescent color? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. But I just thought that the blue and green together could be a nice color combination. Mm -hmm. I like blue and green together. Um, I thought about doing blue and purple, but we did a lot of blue and purple, you know, in previous videos. So I thought this would be nice too and, and a good summer color, mm -hmm. you know. I've not dyed pure silk yarn before or silk roving, but from what I've read, um, you should really soak the silk for at least 24 hours for it to take up the dye really good. 
Um, but we didn't decide what we were actually going to dye today until a little bit an hour before we set everything up and we looked and said, yeah, let's dye that. Um, it's, I, I still got Verity and the baby cats in my office, so getting to everything to play and organize stuff is a bit of chaos right now. I can't get into my closet in my office because we don't want them sneaking in there where we shoved everything to make the room safe for them. So, yeah. Um, it, it's spontaneous. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's a good word. Spontaneous. Spontaneous yarn dyeing with this. Um, but I also want to see, since I didn't soak this ahead of time, if we solar dye it in a mason jar and leave it in there for more than 24 hours, how is it going to take the dye up? Right? Who knows? Yeah. Um, and we're just going to put the dye into the mason jar with the roving, just loose dye powder, mm -hmm. and then pour water over it, citric acid, set it out. And, okay. It's weird. It's not sunny today. It's actually very cloudy. We had a thunderstorm last night, which dropped the temperature from like 97, 98 to 95 today. So it's really cloudy, but it's still supposed to be 95 as a high today, which is Weird. Yeah, we're gonna get this all together and then we'll put it outside in the steamy, oh my god, so steamy, hot, muggy heat, and let it sit for at least a day, maybe, probably longer than a day. We do have our safety equipment here um, goggles, protect your eyes, you only get one set. Mine are bad enough already, I don't need them any worse. And masks, these are RZ masks, not sponsored in any way, but they've got filters and they filter 99.9% .9 of particulates. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, we're going to suit up for safety. Y'all come on in and we will get this put together. Come on. Let's dye some roving. I need to dye something. With a Y. With a Y. <laughs> dye with a Y. <laughs> Start by putting just a little bit of the sour apple on the bottom. We're going to kind of layer the dye, dye powder in there. And we're not worrying about measuring this. Yeah, there's a little bit of water in the bottom of this, but that's okay. That's where I washed it out. Yeah, I just washed it out today. So. Oh, this is, oh, it's so soft and so shiny. Right, I've got just some hot water here. It's not boiling, but it is hot. And check this out, this funnel. Oh my God, I'm so glad I thought about this. This is a funnel for pickling. So it's got a wide mouth. And I never even thought about it until we were getting some supplies for pickling cucumbers, and I was like, oh, that's brilliant. Yes, we should definitely get one of those for yarn dyeing. We got one for pickling as well. We don't use the yarn dyeing one for pickling. Okay, so, cut this in here. I'm living dangerous, y'all. I'm leaving the dyes open. Oh no. I know, right? Now I want to be careful and not at all heavy handed with this blue because it does. More green. That blue is very, very highly pigmented. It's hard to get a good amount in these little coffee stir sticks. You know?
This is also, I believe, the first time I've used the sour apple. Isn't it? I don't, I'm not, I don't remember it, so I guess so, yeah. It is not the first time I've used this peacock blue. Which is how you know it's heavily pigmented. It is very, very pigmented. Yes, it is. This is blend. Yes. But silk dyes lighter than wool. I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of that in there. That could have gone badly. Just a bit. Just a little bit. A little bit more blue? Yes. Or a lot more blue? <laughs> Not that much more blue. But I do want some more. aside now then the last thing we need to do before we put the water in is add some citric acid for our acid component. Meals here. Yeah. I'm gonna start with just two quarter teaspoons. See how that goes? Yeah, see how that goes. Now we put this in here, like that. Okay, we have to take these out. Well, yeah, we have to at least put them together. There we go. And pour the water in. You must let go! Never! I shall not be daunted by silk roving! You shall not daunt me. It shall not happen. No! I'm gonna take maybe a little bit. <laughs> now that the dye is no longer loose in powder form, it's sealed up. We got water in here. I can take the goggles and respirator off. Just making sure this is all down under the water line. I really need to get like some. I actually picked up some bamboo skewers or uh, chopsticks, mm -hmm. but I don't know where they are. But they're much smoother. What? He's they're, pointing. They're right there. <laughs> where? On the shelf. That's oh. Paper towels. We're gonna put the lid on. And this is ready to go out and sit in the sun. Awesome. Yeah. Now we got a little bit of powder mm -hmm. on here. Just a little bit. So I'm just gonna take this roving here. Mm -hmm. And just take a little bit because we don't have a whole lot. This is some BFL top that we picked up from Reconsidered Goods for $1.50 for this bag. So and that's a lot. That's, there's of, a lot. Of yarn, of that, roving. There's a lot of roving in there. Not a lot of money. So, no, it's, it's, it's a really good price. Mm -hmm. So, just going to. Hey, look, that blue is heavily pigmented. Blue <laughs> is incredibly heavily pigmented. Give this over here for you so you can reach it. I need more water. I need more water. Is there anything in the jar? There's nothing in the jar. Just a little bit of, I don't know, nothing. In the jar or where you want it? I just need some water. Um, this jar is fine. Okay. Get this wet. <sighs> Have you all missed this? The chaos that is me doing anything. Have you missed it? 
I know, you've had kitten videos. They are cute, not chaos. Well, okay, they can be chaos, but they're cute chaos. This more table, I painted it white. It does not matter. It's just going to be whatever color it turns out to be. Oh my God, it's everywhere. <laughs> like every time I think, oh, I got it all. Nope. I know, I am scrubbing with this and I'm scrunching it up and that's just not a great idea, but it is what it is. No citric acid in there. Do you is there? Some? Yes, I do, just a little bit. Like that? Okay. Or a little more. Okay. I don't know. What do y'all think? We're gonna get actually any kind of color on that whatsoever or no? What do you think? Guesses? I think it's just gonna be kind of hazy. Yeah, very, very faint, very pastel. Mm-hmm. We'll see, we'll see. All right, lid on this one. And let's go take him outside. Okay. Just gonna let him sit out here while the temperature out here just heats up and it gets really disgustingly hot and we'll bring him in overnight probably but uh, we'll be back once the dye bath clears and see how it looks we'll see you then our roving has been sitting outside for how many days now four, four days um through storms and everything, you can see they're really dirty from, we had some pretty significant storms here. Um, but also through high temps, yes. Even when it was humid and wet from the storms, um, it, it still was really hot. So we're just gonna clean these jars up real quick. Normally I don't do the washing and rinsing of the yarn and roving, whatever fiber, on camera. But I also normally reset everything that I solar dye in the crock pot to make sure that it's fully set. And I'm not doing that this time. So I wanna do at least a little bit of the rinsing on camera to see if it's set fully. Because if not, then we're gonna have to pull out the crock pot and heat up some water and I would have to let you all know that. Oh, this is still warm. I brought this inside today, like four hours ago, and it is still warm. Okay, so our dye bath is basically clear. And let's go ahead and put this in here. It's, it's really pretty. The water in here is cool. Just a jug of water, just, distilled water that we have out here that I normally use for uh, mixing up dye stocks. But I'm gonna use it for this because I know that our water out of the tap is slightly basic. And washing anything with that will go ahead and pull the color out. And since I wanna test and see how this is set, I don't wanna do that. We do have quite a lot in here that didn't get any color. That would be the interior sections of it. Yeah, so far, looking clear. Let's try this roving real quick. Oh, so warm. This was our roving mop, shall we call it? Just the little bit that was left over. It's dye bath, also it's clear. It's just a, an incredibly pale blue. Very, very pale. And I'd be surprised if anything came out of this because there was very little color to start with. No? Still clear? Mm -hmm. You would concur, Chad? Oh, yeah, it's still clear. It's still clear? All right, now for the real test though. I'm going to add some dishwashing liquid. Mm -hmm. 
Now it will turn the water a little bit blue because they make it blue, but it's just very, very faint. It doesn't really look like there's any color to it. So if we suddenly start bleeding color out of our roving, we'll notice the difference. Looks about the same. Yeah. You, no change. you concur? Yeah, no change there. Okay. And now let's put our silk in there. See how it feels about it. I'm trying to be very, very gentle. Don't fall apart on me. Let's see how our water looks. Oh yeah, yep, yep, we got some bleeding. Not bad, but we do have some bleeding. Um, so I'm gonna continue to wash this. I would say you've had worse. I have, I have had worse, a whole lot worse, but I'm just trying to decide, do I want to Heat set it again. It's tough because I'm not at a sink where I can drain this water out and see what it's going to be like. You know? All right, I'm going to go upstairs and finish washing this upstairs. And if it does not rinse clear with just the water, then I will be coming down here and heat setting it in the crock pot. Probably won't plug in the crock pot, but I'll at least boil some water. All right, so this is the water after just a couple of more rinses. And you can see there's like no color. So, and this is with our tap water. So I am not gonna worry about heat setting this in the crock pot. I think we're good. Uh, I need to wash that roughly and rinse it some more and then just going to let it dry and come back and show y'all how it looks. I will not be doing a swatch on this one because this is not yarn. This would have to be spun into yarn and I cannot spin yarn right now because there are baby cats in my office and so I can't get my spinning wheel out. So, all right, I'll be back when this is dry and we'll show you how it looks. And here's our finished roving. It looks pretty good, I think. Um, we have a lot of areas that are still white, especially if we go inside, we can see some. Um, so I don't know if that's from not soaking the fiber first, or if it's from just putting the powder on and it only sticking there, or a combination thereof, I don't know. Um, have to try this again sometime using, you know, liquid dye instead of just the powder and see if that, you know, seeps in all the way. And of course, try it again sometime where we soak the roving, you know, for 24 hours before we try to dye it. But I, I think that, you know, we've got the, the green and the blue and we've even got some yellow here. Check that out yellow I guess where the green broke and then even little bits of the white still it's it's got kind of a kind of an ocean vibe to I me. can see that yeah ocean mermaid something like that yeah. well I mean not mermaid because I think that'd have more purple in it too but you you could be right it mm -hmm. could be mermaid you can be your mermaid if you want there you go your mermaid can be however you want it to mm -hmm. be but yeah, um, and I know it looks in places like it's all clumped up and matted and everything, but it's still, it pulls apart just fine. It's not felted or anything. I don't know if you can even felt silk, but, and it's really, really soft, isn't it? It is. Yeah. It's so, so soft. Um, and I did a, you know, practice little just here, just sort of drafting out a little bit and twisting just to see how it's going to spin and yeah it's it's fine it's 
perfectly fine. But yeah, it's, I think it's a really nice looking skein. And then of course, here is our roving mop, I guess you'd call it. And it does have some color to it. It does. It is just the absolute faintest blue ever. But it's it's still very, very pretty. And yeah, it's not felted either. You know, it it's gonna pull apart and everything. I mean, at least not any more than it was, you know, in the bag that I got it from. So but it it hasn't been like carded or anything, I don't think. It might have been combed at some point, but yeah, you can see it pulls apart pretty easy. It's not prepped for spinning though, so I have to do that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll try dyeing up some more of this, you know, wool in a really light color like this and try to do a wool silk blend. I don't mm -hmm. know. I don't know. I've never dyed silk before, but I can tell it's definitely got a longer fiber then I'm sorry it's got a longer staple than the wool I'm used to spinning just by by playing with this roll this right here I can tell it's got a much much longer staple because when I was pulling it here I could feel it way back here where I was pulling where the ends of it were pulling out so it was really nice to finally get to dye some fiber again it's I said it earlier on in the video, say it again. It's been a rough year and it's nice to be finally getting back into the swing of things again and being able to, to dye some fiber and you know, looking forward to dyeing some yarn too and, and just all kinds of other artistic things. <laughs> I'll bring a work I pack up in today, I promise. I hope y'all enjoyed watching us dye this fiber in just sort of a spur of the moment adventure. Uh, if you did, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, hit that like button. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that now and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything that we try here. You know, we always like having y'all along with us for the adventures. Anyway, I hope y'all have an absolutely incredible day and we will see you on our next adventure. Bye everybody. Say bye Chad. Bye everybody. Bye.